Today I'm going to talk about the basics of professional irrigation management by sensors. Optimal irrigation means to create optimal soil moisture conditions and optimal nutrient availability in the whole root zone. Here on this picture the whole root zone is indicated by this bluish green area. Sample crop is strawberries, rooting depths between 0 and 30 centimeters. You will find about 80-90% of the active root tips in this area. And then we have two moisture sensors, one in the main root zone and one below. The upper sensor should fluctuate in the crop and development stage specific optimum range while the lower sensor should create almost no movement over time. And this basic principle is valid regardless the crops. It could be strawberries, it could be permanent crops like apple tree in this example. Always the same approach, two sensors, one in the main root zone and one below. Here I have an example from real life data from good irrigation management that was done in Apple where we have an optimum uh, range between about 45 and 10 kilopascal soil water potential and we see the sensor in 25 centimeters is fluctuating pretty much inside the optimum range and we have only very short small ditches below into the wet end and we almost have no measurement values above this optimum range. So this is a very good irrigation management while the lower sensor in this case 60 centimeters below ground is fluctuating between 10 and 20 kilopascal so it never gets too wet. What is pretty commonly seen in, in real life is a too wet irrigation scheduling. That results in nutrient loss by deep percolation and a reduced nutrient availability and uptake due to a la lack of oxygen in the rooting zone. This happens of course mainly in heavier soils. The moisture we create by our irrigation is here again indicated by this blue bluish green area. We see that we irrigate well below the active root zone and that results in a measurement at the upper sensor which is fluctuating between super wet and coming back to the optimum range getting super wet again because the next irrigation is just too close time wise and maybe too large and in the application amount while the lower sensor is just never leaving the super wet area between 0 and 10 kilopascal. We cannot keep water against gravity in soils in this range, so we create a permanent deep percolation and a loss of nutrients to the groundwater and environmental pollution. This is another example from real life. It's an over-irrigation example. It was also done in apples. And as we see, the uh, sensor in the main rooting zone is ditching repeatedly for longer times into the area where it shouldn't be for prolonged times between 10 and 0 hectopascal soil water potential, while the lower sensor at 60 centimeters is almost never leaving this super wet range which is just showing that we lose nutrients, we waste water, we waste energy to pump the water and we don't do any good for our crop. Of course frequently also to dry irrigation scheduling or very uneven irrigation scheduling is seen in real life. Permanently to dry irrigation management would result in a reduced size of the root zone a reduced nutrient availability since there is just no water to transport the nutrients to the root tips and the consequences are reduced nutrient uptake because uh, the stomata of this crop would be closed at times during day and we would just have a reduced growth. 
This is another example from real life, a not balanced irrigation. In this case, I had only one sensor, which was in the main rooting zone. This was again apple, but uh, older orchard. The trees were bigger, and we see that repeatedly the moisture comes for longer periods in the very very dry conditions irrigation events just come too late and we have a reduced production for sure next question is how many senses are necessary we were always covering the two senses in two depths but since moisture is not really evenly distributed over the field uh, we need to have some replications. This is so because measuring soil moisture has a lot of similarities with taking soil samples for nutrient analysis. It's always necessary to have some replications to get a good picture about what is really happening on your field. So in principle it would be of course the best to have as many sensors as possible. On the other hand, that's a question of cost and therefore a good compromise between accuracy and cost is to install six sensors per irrigation block or irrigation management unit. Three sensors in the main root zone and three sensors below root zone. We see this here on this picture. This would be one irrigation block and this is the next one. And in every of these blocks, we have three sensor pairs, always two sensors, one in the main root zone and one below, randomly distributed over this block. And of course, we have to take different rows at different distance from the water inlet in case of a drip or a micro sprinkler system. And we have to randomly distribute these measurement points in the pretty center of the field so we don't measure the soil moisture at the edges of the field because we may have some uh, untypically compacted soils in these areas. But also the position of the soil moisture sensors against the irrigation system is important. First of all, we have to make sure that we always install the three replications or two sensors identically versus the irrigation system. In drip irrigation, it is best to install about 5 to 10 centimeters close to the next dripper and close to a typical plant of this particular plot. This is so because we can expect that the wetted bulb has a lot of active root tips and we have the most uniform moisture distribution in these areas and we have also the most uniform water extraction by the plants so we should install 5 to 10 centimeters next to a dripper maybe one sensor at one side and the other sensor at the other side of the drip line always 5 to 10 centimeters next to the dripper. Wrong would be to install between two drippers far away from the next plant. We would not really see a lot of effect and the worst thing you could do would be to install one sensor pair maybe here, one sensor pair here and the next one here in this area and the third pair maybe in this area in between not really in between two drippers like the first one but somewhere here on the edge because then we would get three pairs of really different readings and we would not have any solid information we could base our irrigation decisions on again just uh, summarize the upper sensor is in the main root zone and gives you the, you the information when do i have to start to irrigate as soon as the average of the three sensors in the main root zone is close or above 
the irrigation stress out from of this particular crop, you would start to irrigate. While uh, the lower sensor, it has to be installed under the main root zone and gives you the information how long or how much do I have to irrigate per individual application. We check this by uh, reading the lower sensors about one or two hours after the irrigation has stopped. So we take again the average of this sensor, this sensor and this sensor under the root zone and uh, see if we have one, two hours after the irrigation has stopped uh, a strong reaction to the wet end. If this is the case, we have to reduce the irrigation application amount a little bit next time and repeat this procedure, see if one, two hours after irrigation has stopped, we have a strong, still a strong reaction to the wet end. If this is not the case, we have just caught the right amount so that we just will wet the, the main ruling zone, but we don't transport water below it. We come to a situation that the lower sensor is over time getting drier and drier again. We give a little bit too little water per application. The next step would be the installation of the soil moisture sensors. I'm going to soon cover this topic in a separate presentation. Apart from this, we have a, a good collection of videos on sensor installation already on YouTube, so please check these. Therefore, I thank you very much for your interest and please also visit our website www.mmm-tech.de. Thank you very much.